All right, folks, so if you have not already done so, please take a few minutes to um, complete the pre-survey that uh, Jessica has dropped into the chat. Um, just a reminder, these pre-surveys are going to be really helpful for us understanding um, whether kind of what your baseline level of knowledge is so that we can adjust um, our lecture content accordingly, but also at the end of the week um, when you do fill out the uh, sort of post survey to understand how much you learned. It'll help us understand how effectively we actually were able to um, teach you what we're hoping to teach you, convey the knowledge that we're hoping to convey this week. Um, so those are really helpful for us. So if you have um, not been doing them, please go back and complete the ones that you haven't been able to do so far and then, um, you know, complete them as often as you are able to uh, throughout now through the end of the, the boot camp. All right, so let's get started. Um, who can tell me what a data usage license is? What do we mean by this? Does anybody have any um, previous knowledge about this topic? Hi. Uh, hey, Juan. Uh, I think I once I downloaded some data and the license said like, oh, you can do anything but with this data. It's just very good uh, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for chiming in. That's exactly what we're talking about. It's when um, somebody makes a data set or doesn't always have to be a data set, some, some creative work even. And they publish it, they make it available online. They tag it with a data usage, usage license that tells you exactly how you can use this, this piece of information going forward. Um, there's lots of different ways that are kind of restrictions that can be placed on it. And some there are some licenses that are, are no restrictions. Um, so we'll go through that today and just talk about um, kind of an overview, there's 15, 20, 30, 40 different types of licenses. So obviously we can't cover all of them, um, but we will cover kind of the most common ones, which are probably going to be applicable in most situations. So without further ado, so uh, the objectives for this lecture are to help you understand the importance of licensing data sets and then also to kind of compare and contrast the different types of data sets so that you have an understanding whenever you need to um, license your data. So just as a background, um, we kind of mentioned this when we talked about the uh, introduction to FAIR data principles on Monday, but that FAIR data does not always mean open. Um, open data is data that's freely available for everybody to download and use, but um, FAIR data is data that is accessible under well-defined conditions. So maybe you restrict access to your data set, but that you tell people how they can gain access to, to the data set if they are um, eligible. Um, and there might be 
legitimate reasons why you would want to um, shield your data and services or shield your data. And then, uh, so for example, if you have a data set that you've worked on, it's been funded by your government and they deem it a national security issue. Obviously, that's not something that you want freely available. Um, that's something that you would apply a data license to that does not allow um, certain people to, to have access to that data. Um, and this is especially true when you're talking usually about things generated with public funds or um, pieces of data that are concerning people's privacy, right? Privacy rights are a big issue and making sure that people's, you know, data that is is their information that belongs to them um, does not get out uh, into the into the the world, I guess, if you will. So um, any piece of data that is available, uh, particularly ones that are included in the me metadata, is uh, completely at the discretion of the owner. It's if you think that it should be available for people, um, then then it is right. It's your discretion. You have that choice as the owner of the data. And as the one who has the ability to choose, you're also the one who then um, gets to choose the appropriate data license. So fair data principles require clarity and transparency around the conditions governing access and reuse, not necessarily that you have to have free access to everybody, to every data set. So what is a data license? Um, we, are, we already kind of talked about this a little bit through our opening question, but a data license is a legal arrangement between the creator of the data and the end user specifying what users can do with the data. So um, the end user is whoever is just downloading the data, who's ever looking at the data, um, using that data for, for further research work or analysis or, or whatever they're using it for. So um, data licenses are usually usually show up when we're talking about uh, or when we're looking at data platforms. So for example, a Zenodo, you'll see here license for the files. It, this uh, particular example uses a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International. So just reading that, we don't know um, what that means. You'd have to go look it up unless you're a professional or uh, you know really involved with this kind of stuff. Um, here we have a DTU data library. We have the same Creative Commons um, license 4.0 International. Again, another example um, from a different data set. This is another Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 um, International license. So all four or all three of these examples use the same data set, which are the same data license. So that tells us that this is a really common, really popular um, data license. So when you are looking at what type of data license to use, I told you that you know, there's 30, 40, 50 different types of data license, it's a good idea, a good practice to look at what the expectation is in your um, research discipline. And um, if that if if that type of data license also would work for you, probably to just adopt that one um, because it would fit the expectations of your community, your research community. So why should I apply a license to my data? License, licenses allow your data to be shared and reused under flexible, legally sound terms. So if you apply a license to your data, it reduces uncertainty. It helps um, users know how the data can be either redistributed, reused, mined, or combined, and it just overall helps to reduce ambiguity. If anybody has access to your data, they know exactly whether they can um, what they can use it for instead of um, you know not telling them so you know a lot of times if we find something the assumption is I can use it for whatever I want but if you tell them through a data license hey you can use this but I don't want you to use it commercially then they know and they are you know ethically um, and legally bound to follow that guidance that you provided to them <coughs> So in this section, we'll go through a bunch of different data license types. You'll kind of see the terminology that's commonly used for them and also see what some of the, the variety um, is, the, the variety of licenses available. 
So the most common license is the Creative Commons license. That was the same license we saw in the three examples at the start of the hour. And the Creative Commons licenses are um, a suite of Creative Commons licenses. There's multiple of them available. And they clearly describe how data can and cannot be reused. Um, once you have data that is licensed with the Creative Commons license and you are in possession of that data, um, you always have the right to use it under those license terms. Even if at a later date, they, the owner of that data chooses to change the way it's licensed. CC or Creative Commons licenses are irrevocable. So you don't have to worry about them updating their license. Um, another common data license is the Open Data Commons, um, which is the home of a set of legal tools and licenses to help you publish, provide, and use open data. There are also proprietary licenses um, end user license agreements, which is um, on the end user side, and then the MIT license is another um, pretty common one. So to get us started, um, the first uh, license listed here is a Creative Commons um, CCBY attribution, or attribution CCBY. So this license lets others distribute, remix, tweak, and build upon your work even commercially as long as they credit you for the original creation. This is the uh, most accommodating of licenses. It's recommended for maximum dissemination and use of the license materials. This is the one that we saw in the, the earlier three, three examples. They all used the same um, CCBY license. So it's just saying um, the only limit is you can use this, but you have to say who say where you got it from. Basically, write credit, provide credit. The next one that we have listed here is um, essentially the same thing. This CCBYSA. So again, you have to credit the individual. You can use it for um, whatever you want, basically but you have to share any adaptations based on this data under the same terms. So if you are going to use this data set for your own purposes, reuse, remix, um, anything, you have to also license it with a CCBY essay license, basically. So this license will live with this data and all of its derivations. Next, we have um, the no derivatives CCBYND um, license, which um, this one, again, you can use it for any purpose, including commercially, but you also have to give credit to the data owner, whoever created it, and you are not allowed to um, create any derivatives or adaptations. They, you kind of have to just use the data in its pure form, essentially. Next, we have the attribution non-commercial. This is um, labeled as BYNC. So again, BY, the credit must be given to the creator. And then um, it can only be used for non-commercial uses, NC. No one is allowed to use your data to make money, basically. But they can do anything else to it in terms of remixing, tweaking, or adapting your work. The next type of license that we'll talk about is the um, attribution non-commercial share alike or CC uh, BY NC SA. So you're, I hope you're starting to see a, a common trend here that BY always means you have to credit, NC always means um, non-commercial, and then SA means share alike, right? So we're seeing a common trend with um, with these uh, variable names or um, abbreviations that are being used. So here, again, you can um, reuse, remix, tweak, um, adapt the work or the, the data however you want, um, as long as you don't try to make money off of it, i.e. non-commercially, um, and as long as they give you credit. And this is another license that kind of lives with the work with the data, whichever you've created. Um, anytime somebody uses this data and um, redistributes it, they have to use this same um, attribution non-commercial share alike uh, license. So the next one we will talk about is the attribution non-commercial no derivatives license or um, CCBYNC. 
ND. So this is the most restrictive of the licenses we've talked about so far. Um, the only thing that this license allows people to do is to download your work and share them as long as they credit you, but they can't change them in any way or use them commercially. So um, there's nothing, there's no derivatives that can be used, no additional analysis, no adaptation. It's just I can download this data and I can send it to, you know, my good friend Fred down the street or something as long as I tell him that I got it from Joe over here or something. So this is um, very restrictive, but it does allow access to the data. The last one um, from the Creative Commons that we'll talk about is just the CC0 uh, license. This is a what's called a public public dedication license, um, which basically allows you to give up rights to your work into the public domain. And it, this license allows users to do anything they want um, with their license and they don't and it doesn't have any um, limits for crediting any limits for commercial or non-commercial use or any limits for further licensing it's just you know i made this it's free to the world you know um, do with it what you will basically so this is just a nice summary chart um, kind of helping you to compare all of these different types of licenses and whether or not um, you know these different licenses allow you to copy and redistribute the work um, to understand whether or not it's required to credit the author whether or not you can use the the um, data commercially if you're allowed to adapt it or if you have to use it in its pure form and then also um, do you have to maintain the same license or can you change the license when you're redistributing it? Um, any questions on these different types of licenses? Oh, I didn't mean to close that down. Any questions on these different types of licenses before we carry on? And what they mean and kind of what the point of the different types are? So what do you think the benefit, I'll ask a question of you, what do you think the benefit is of the using the share alike um, option basically in a Creative Commons license? Why would, why would somebody care to have the same license applied to their data set? You know, the, the, any, any work that originated with their data set, regardless of whether it was a derivative or not. Any thoughts? Even wrong thoughts are welcome. <laughs> yes, I can repeat the question. So I said, um, so a lot of these uh, license rules are something is to me is pretty straightforward, like non-commercial. Okay, clearly if someone's gonna make money, I wanna make money off of, <laughs> of my own work maybe. Um, credit that always makes sense to me. You know, I want uh, credit for the work that I do and um, you know, whether or not you're allowed to to um, adapt the work and redistribute it. That all makes sense to me. But the one that um, to me is a little bit more less intuitive is the share alike limit that's on the Creative Commons license. So um, why would a, you, an individual, an entity, want to um, tag their data usage license with the share alike limit? Why would somebody want to guarantee that any time this data set is used or passed on or adapted in any way, um, why would you, they want to guarantee that it will have the same Creative Commons license? 
So yes, so Hazel says, or is somebody gonna chime in? Maybe, okay. So in the chat, Hazel responded, so it can be adapted and changed, but that further information can't be restricted in the future. And I think that's exactly the reasoning why. All right, so if um, I make make a, um, you know, do a lot of work and I create something and I just limit it, or I just license it with the CCBY, that means anytime it's used in the future, someone will credit me. But then, um, you know, some big box corporation, I'm not sure who, McDonald's, uh, <laughs> they're not really a big box corporation in the, anyway. Um, you know, they, they find this, they think it's excellent, they adapt it, and they make millions of dollars off of it, right? But then in their adaptation of it, they restrict it and don't let anybody else make any derivatives or any ad adaptations or anything like that. And so, you know, they took your kind of free license that you provided, pretty per permissive license, I just want to provide credit, and they took it and made a bunch of money off of it in a way that restricted anybody else from using, you know, the work essentially that you initially did. And so this uh, share alike is ensuring that if I made this data and I did all this work, then anybody else that uses this data also um, has to maintain free access and free use on um, in whatever you know way that you initially deemed appropriate for your data set. So it's just to make sure that um, if you don't want further restrictions to be added to your data, your product down the line, that they won't be. So that's what the the share alike is kind of guaranteeing. Does that make sense? Silence means yes, right? Right. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. A couple of yeses in the chat. OK, so let's carry on with this discussion. Appreciate the responses, folks. I know it's been a long week. <laughs> All right. Um, OK, so the next piece that we were going to I was going to show you is a way to help choose a license because this can be in my opinion um, pretty confusing and a little bit daunting right I told you there's hundreds not hundreds but you know 10 15 20 different licenses how do we pick the right one so there's a pretty nice um, chooser to help you pick based on what you think um, you want in your license uh, to help you pick which is the right one so this is creativecommons.org slash choose. Um, and the link is also in the in the PowerPoint. But here you can go, the, the beta is a little bit nicer, but it just goes through a list of questions um, for that you can use to um, help you pick which type of license you want. So do you want attribution for your work? Do you want credit for your work? Yes, I want credit for my work. Um, and then this one, is the first one that's recommended, but maybe you want some more restrictions. Do you want others to use your work commercially? No, I don't. So now they've changed it. And so you can go through this um, Creative Commons chooser and it will help you pick which one you, or which license would be most appropriate for, you know, based on your responses to these questions. So do you want uh, to allow others to share adaptations of your work under any terms? Uh, no, they must use the same CC license. That's the share like we talked about. Um, and then you can kind of say yes, it's the right one or no, I, um, it's not what I'm looking for kind of thing. So this is a kind of a nice way to help walk you through that license choosing process. Um, so you don't have to read up and make sure you understand all the details of the, all the codes that come into these. So that's what these slides here are doing, just showing you um, different ways that the you can use the Creative Commons license selector. Um, the, this is using an old uh, format for it, and I think the new format is a little bit more intuitive. Um, so I thought I would show you the live one. So let's um, tab through these quickly. 
OK, so now we have a question. So identify the correct statement regarding Creative Commons public domain. Um, and this is the CC0 license, right? Um, and more than one statement can be correct. So we have A, allows creator to give up their rights. B, work can be used commercially. C, work is only used non-commercially. Or D, work must be attributed to the author. And again, any, um, you can, this is a select as many as correct answer. What do we think? A, definitely allows the creator to give up their rights. Definitely correct. Um, any other ones that you think are correct? So if I'm giving up my rights to my work, to whatever I created, um, can the work be used commercially? So yes, we have a couple people um, now chiming in with B. Um, and then we have one person who said D. So yes, the correct answer is um, A and B. And the reason why D is not the correct answer is because it says work must be attributed to the author. And if you are um, making, if you are um, using that CC0 license, that Creative Commons in the public domain, you are basically relinquishing any right to that work. You are giving the copyright to that work to the public domain. So let's see if I can, let's see how many slides back this is uh, right here. OK, so yeah, it says that CC0 allows users to distribute, remix, adapt, and build upon the material in any medium format or format with no com conditions. The creators give up their copyright and put their works into the worldwide public domain. So it basically makes the world the um, the work belong to the public instead of to you. And so if it doesn't belong to you, um, then you're no longer asking people to credit you, basically. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so the um, next one we talked about was the Open Data Commons license. This, um, these licenses are a set of legal tools used to enable the sharing and use of data, which is essentially true of um, all of these licenses. But these licenses in particular are designed to provide a standard legal framework for sharing and using data and to promote open data practices. There's a couple different types of open data licenses. Um, there's a public domain dedication and license, PDDL. Um, this is very similar to the Creative Commons um, public zero public domain license. It allows users to freely use, modify, and distribute data without any legal restrictions or obligations. There is similarly um, an attribution license, Open Data Commons by. Uh, this allows users to freely use, modify, and distribute data provided that they attribute the original creator. This license is recommended for data that the creator wishes to be freely shared but still wants to be credited for their work. Um, and we have another open database license, ODBL. This is specifically designed for databases and regulates the use and sharing of the data within the database. It requires users to attribute the database creator and share any modifications to the database under the same terms. Um, and this particular license is recommended for databases that contain valuable data and that the creator wishes to share but also wants to protect. <clears throat> There's also proprietary licenses. These are legal agreements that grant exclusive rights to use, modify, and distribute a piece of software, data, or other intellectual property. These licenses are typically used by software companies and other organizations to protect their intellectual property and generate revenue. Um, these are also, our proprietary licenses vary widely in their terms and conditions, but generally restrict the use and distribution of the licensed property. Um, so this is basically any type of license that a company would use to make money, right? I'm going to put a, I'm going to develop some, some software. I'm going to put, put a proprietary license on it and make you pay for it if you want to use it. 
right? So um, this is essentially any piece of software that's in the commercial space. Um, and in some cases, even data sets that are in the commercial space, right? Um, there's all sorts of companies that go collect data and then ask you to pay for it, um, to have access to it. So some examples that you're probably all aware of um, that have proprietary licenses are Microsoft Windows, Skype, Adobe, Photoshop, et cetera, et cetera. The list um, is nearly endless uh, on this, so. Okay, <clears throat> next we have the end user license agreement. Um, this is a legal agreement between the software vendor and the end user of the software. This is what you <laughs> always click through whenever you sign up for something essentially or buy something, uh, some sort of software. You always have to accept um, the terms of the license agreement, right? And if you don't accept them, you can't use that software. So this, um, the end user license agreements define the terms and conditions for using the software and establish the rights and responsibilities of both parties. Um, and as I mentioned, these are presented to the user during the installation process and you are um, required to agree to it before you can move forward. So the last license we will talk about is the MIT license. The MIT license um, is, I, th I think, increasingly popular. I've, I'm seeing it more and more places, it seems like, these days. So the MIT license is a popular open source license that allows users to freely use, modify, and distribute software or other creative works. It's a very permissive license. Um, it allows anyone to use the licensed software for or work for any purpose, including commercial use without restriction. It allows the users to modify licensed software or work and distribute the modified, modified version under any license they choose, including proprietary licenses. However, the modified version must include the original copyright notice and license terms. So if you're going to use um, a, a work from an MIT license, you can change what it's licensed under, but you always have to um, tell you know tell the uh, future users what the original terms of that license were um, the mit license allows users to redistribute the licensed software or work either in its original or modified form without any additional restrictions or requirements um, and the mit license is compatible with many other open source licenses allowing users to combine and distribute software or works under multiple licenses Okay, so now to compare some of these different licenses. So um, the Creative Commons, Open Data Commons, and MIT licenses are all open source licenses that allow users to access and use software or creative works without restriction. Proprietary licenses, on the other hand, restrict the use of software to the license holder, and end user license agreements restrict the use of software or content to the end user. So Creative Commons, Open Data Commons, and MIT licenses allow users to modify software or creative works um, and distribute them under different licenses, and proprietary licenses usually restrict you from modifying the software or creative work. Um, creative Commons licenses require attribution. Um, open Data Commons licenses may or may not require attribution. Uh, proprietary licenses also may or may not require attribution. And then MIT licenses absolutely require attribution as well as notice of the original copyright and license. Um, <clears throat> Creative Commons, Open Data Commons, and MIT licenses are all compatible with, with each other and with many other open source licenses. Um, proprietary licenses are usually not compatible because they are proprietary. <laughs> um, as far as scope goes, Creative Commons and Open Data Commons licenses are mainly used for work such as text, images, and data. MIT licenses are more commonly used for software. Um, and proprietary licenses and uh, end user license agreements are used for um, both software and creative works. They can be used for any manner of things. So um, as far as an approach goes for selecting a license for data release, um, we did go through <clears throat> the Creative Commons chooser, which could be helpful if you are interested in a Creative Commons chooser. But um, before you kind of get to that point, the first step is to not select a license without proper research. So make sure that you understand 
what the license is that you're selecting before you actually choose to apply that license to your data. So first, um, especially if you're working on a research project under an advisor or um, or a boss, or a supervisor, or, or whatnot, make sure that you can release your data in a public repository. Make sure that you have permission that this is a decision being made by your team and not independently. And make sure that the data you are releasing is um, is available to be released and check whether or not it's subject to copyright, contractual, or legal sensitivities. sensitivities. And make sure that you're applying by any terms of service that um, were used in gathering or publishing the data. Um, make sure that you include data values where entities such as publishers or users hold the copyright. So that's always um, an issue to check whether or not your data was initially copyrighted. Um, make sure that you, uh, if you have used, worked with a data set and created a derivative of it, make sure that you've processed it under uh, the um, correct correct license and whether and understanding whether or not um, you were allowed to um, make derivatives of that work and that will dictate whether or not you can actually publish a derivative of it. And then um, also uh, always good to check with your employer or your home institution on whether or not they have policies on how data products and other intellectual property can be um, released and licensed because some some universities might have different rules in, in regards to that, especially um, when it comes to um, work that could be considered uh, proprietary as a result of university investment. Okay, so um, kind of some last details on, on what things you might take into account when you're choosing a license for data release. Um, I said this at the beginning of the lecture, but it's always a good idea to look at your community and see what others around you are doing in your research community. And um, if it's appropriate, I would just follow suit just because, um, you know, it's good to sort of stick with the standards of your community unless you have a good reason not to. Um, select a license that you understand. Make sure that you understand the the restrictions or the the freedoms that you are putting on your license so that um, it's not used in a way that you don't want it to be used by. And then um, declare the license as we saw um, at the beginning with the examples. Uh, make sure that you tell people clearly what the license is for your work, for your data. Um, there's a spot in a lot of times in the metadata to indicate that. And then also when you do upload data to a repository, there's an opportunity to indicate what the license is for that data so that um, it's you know freely easy it's easy for everybody to see and then know exactly what their freedoms or limitations are in regards to this data set in particular so that is um, all i have for you in terms of content for this section 